We're going to start this in the middle by taking a look at these uh, ceramic heating elements for HACO soldering stations. Uh, these two were uh, ordered from a seller and these two from a different seller. As you can see they came with a slightly different packaging and I'm curious if inside they're the same thing. So let's open and take a closer look. These ones just came with the instructions, uh, with the paper printed instructions. Uh, no other packagings. So you could uh, say these came in bulk. Let's see what should they say in here. Okay, so a uh, couple of instructions on how to replace the heating element. Okay, so this is how they look. They have uh, four wires, uh, probably two wires are the heating element and two wires are for the thermocouple inside and let's open uh, these ones and see if they're the same thing well they look almost identical but I can see slightly different uh, coloring on the sleeves of the cables and maybe slightly different uh, ceramic uh, stuff on the element itself. But I'm not sure, they could very well be coming from the same factory. Yeah, so they're pretty much the same thing. I believe uh, price wise they were also pretty similar. There weren't any big differences between these two. But anyway, uh, just as the uh, tag says, these are 24 volts, 50 watt heating elements. Most likely not original Hakko, uh, judging by uh, their price. Uh, they, they might uh, be uh, clones. but. Uh, I think good quality ones. Even so, I have uh, clones of the HACO soldering stations, so that's okay, average quality all the way. The thing is, when uh, replacing tips, let me just uh, show you my old soldering uh, iron. It's this one right here. So as I was saying, uh, the thing is, when, uh, when exchanging uh, tips, Often the uh, ceramic material surrounding the tip breaks and so you are left with uh, just the heating element uninsulated uh, which could potentially uh, be um, a, a risk of shock for the user and of course there is no more heat being transferred to the actual tip because, because now there is a huge gap around the actual heating element and so the uh, the actual tip of the soldering iron is not touching anymore the, the heating element. If that happens to you, uh, you get uh, yourself a set of these and replace the heating element. There should be a snug fit between the heating element and the uh, inside of the tip to ensure good uh, heat transfer. And as we can see in this case, there is a slight gap so these are not actually ideal thickness but maybe we can do something to improve that uh, maybe add some uh, copper foil just to make it a very snug fit uh, between these two anyway a link for these uh, ceramic heating elements will be in the description below if you want to check them out since we are in the soldering department, let's take a look at these uh, brass cleaning sponges. These are so much better than uh, using a wet sponge for cleaning the uh, soldering iron tip because they don't drop the temperature as much. I'm not really sure if they are uh, brass or, or if the uh, Chinese factories found a cheaper uh, alloy to use in the, in the fabrication of these sponges, but they're cheap 
and very effective in cleaning your soldering iron. You might argue that this adds a wear to your soldering iron tip, but I've been soldering for years and using these for cleaning and haven't noticed any important wear because of these. So I recommend you get yourself some and try, try them out. You will be surprised how good and effective these sponges are for cleaning your soldering iron. Next, let's take a look at this alcohol plastic container. It's uh, 200 milliliters. It's marked on the side and it's the type that uh, has uh, that pump mechanism inside. So you get your paper towel, you press on top and you soak it with alcohol in a quick way. It's useful to have one of these on the bench when doing any kind of uh, PCB work and you can put uh, any liquid inside, uh, alcohol, um, IPA, uh, even flux cleaner if you can get that stuff bottled. These are a pair of anti-static working gloves and they're good for anything where you would like a minimum layer of protection without any risk of uh, building up a static charge. Uh, you get these in various sizes. I think these are the small or medium size. Uh, these just fit uh, perfectly over my hand. Maybe just a bit too small, but I like them like this to be a snug fit because it's much easier to work when they uh, when you don't have a lot of extra material uh, between your fingers. And they have these uh, small rubber-like uh, dots on the inside of the palm, so this helps uh, grip any object. I tend to use these kind of gloves. I tend to use these kind of gloves when uh, doing uh, fine soldering over sensitive PCBs just to uh, protect my hands from all the uh, soldering materials and also protect the sensitive PCBs from uh, just to avoid the building up a static charge. They're quite cheap and uh, well worth having a pair around. Next up I have more of these uh, star-shaped aluminum LED PCBs. You've seen these uh, before in previous videos. You use, you use them to solder one LED on uh, each of these star PCBs, uh, LEDs that are 1, 3 or 5 watts, but don't consider this enough heatsink for the LED. This will just act as a base which you can further bolt onto a more appropriate heatsink for cooling. And uh, you also get these uh, pads for the anode and the cathode where you can easily solder wires. A link for this will be in the description below. This one is a Cree XTE white LED in a warm white variant. It's supposed to have an output between 1 and 5 watts for a current from 350 milliamps up to 1.5 amps. It would be interesting to strap this to a beefy heatsink and push it up to 1.5 amps and see if it survives continuous usage and uh, at what temperature the dye of the LED will rise. I wouldn't want to damage it. I got it to replace the LED in a reading lamp to maybe get a more uniform, better quality, uh, better light distribution from that lamp. Because with the original El Chipo white LED, you get these uneven light shades because of the crappy filter they used on the LED lens. So I'm hoping this one is an original Cree and will give me a much better result. Let me just uh, show you how this one looks when powered at approximately 3 volts from my bench power supply. Yeah, so at uh, 3.1 volts it pulls approximately 700 milliamps from my power supply. And it's a quite bright LED for such a small package. But yeah, you know. LED technology advances year by year and uh, we get these uh, LEDs smaller and smaller and with greater power output. Next I was missing a pentalobe 0.8mm screwdriver from my toolkit so I thought I'd get one of the cheap ones off eBay. I ordered it and a month later I got this thing in, in my mail and my first thought was that they sent, they sent me the wrong one. I, I didn't even know they make uh, this type with a 90 degree bend, but after a closer look, 
I realized this thing got damaged during shipping, so it was like this when they sent it. Trying to make it straight again will probably break the pentalobe shape or break the uh, tip right off, so I'm just going to toss this one away and order another one. Other than that, it looks okay and I would have uh, used it uh, very few times, so I think this thing could have lasted for years in my toolbox. Next, here I have a set of 20 pieces quick wire connectors. So these are model CH2, 20 pieces. I got these from uh, Banggood and they, they seemed like an, a nice addition to my connectors toolkit. Certainly they're going to be useful someday uh, when doing wiring. So they have this uh, small clip that you need to uh, press, you insert your wire and you're done. It's a press fit system. They come with the small information card so we can see they're good for up to mains voltage 250 volts, less than 10 amps and wire sizes between 0.5 and 3.5 square millimeters. But total power should be under uh, 1500 watts. Uh, which is which is okay, I guess you would only use these for lower power circuits anyway. A link for these connectors will be in the description below. Next up, this must be the most insignificant package I have ever shown on video, but here it is anyway. Maybe some of you were looking for something like this, or maybe this uh, started your interest on building something. Uh, I believe in this bag I have 24 pieces and 3 24mm long hex socket black alloy screws. I needed these for securing the cooling fans on my dummy load project enclosure and believe it or not I went to a couple of hardware store locally and the closest I could find were Philips head screws 25mm long and silver finish. But my OCD did not agree with that silver finish. I needed black screws to match the black anodized enclosure, so I ordered them from eBay. If you're interested in something like this, I'll post a link for this in the description below. If you remember the last in the mail, I showed the high voltage step up module. I mentioned back then I got it just for fun. Well, there were two models that were showing up in search results on eBay, so I ordered both of them back then. This one arrived a bit later, but it's kind of the same thing in a different form factor, maybe slightly smaller, maybe it generates a lower voltage at its output. Uh, it, it, on the product page on eBay it says just uh, 7 kV output, but you never know with these things, they almost always have fake ratings and I don't have a proper equipment to measure the high voltage at its uh, output. Anyway, let's try to hook it to a 3 volts uh, DC power supply and see what we get on the output. And warning for those who are listening to this on their headphones, there might be some powerful noises coming up. So I'm going to try to place the output wires kind of close together so they create uh, an arc. And I'm gonna hook this to my uh, bench power supply. And let's see what, what kind of uh, spark we get from this module. Well, I'm going to increase the voltage up to 5 volts. So at 3 volts nothing was happening, but as I increased uh, towards 4, 4.5 volts, we started getting an arc on the output. So as, as mentioned previously, I, I got this just for fun, just to create some uh, small electric arcs. Our next item is this small compact LED driver for 1 watt LEDs. It has a 350 milliamps output, presumably constant current. It's supposed to work in a step-down configuration with an input between 5 and 35 volts. What caught my eye on the eBay listing is this uh, uh, PWM input, 
which means you could uh, in theory dim the LED using a simple PWM signal generated from an Arduino or some other analog circuit because usually these compact LED drivers don't offer you any control just full output all the time. Uh, this guy uses the XL4001 from XL Semi, which is, um, I checked the dat datasheet and it's a 2 amps capable buck converter with a constant current loop integrated inside the chip. This means the chip has a current sense pin and when used in conjunction with some uh, current sensing uh, resistors, you get a constant current loop and that's exactly what they're doing here on this module. These uh, small three resistors right here, they're in 0805 package. They're connected in parallel, probably to spread the power uh, dissipation, and they're used to sense the current. The PWM pin is actually the enable pin of the chip, and I'm not sure if it's a feature of the chip to accept PWM control on that enable pin, or it's just something that's pushing the limits of the chip, just something that the uh, designer of the P PCB thought it was possible. I also don't understand how they got away with no voltage feedback because the only resistors that we see here are these three ones and they're in parallel and they're in the current control loop. But uh, this thing uh, I could see in the example circuit diagram in the datasheet, uh, they were also using uh, voltage feedback. But anyway, a link for this uh, module and the datasheet of the Excel Semi chip will be in the description below. Next, I got myself a couple of these classic, well-known DHT11 humidity plus temperature sensors. These sensors are very popular, they're low cost and they spit out data on a digital interface. That is humidity and temperature. Don't expect um, great accuracy from these. They use a plain old uh, thermistor for getting the temperature reading, probably not a very um, high quality one and a capacitive sensor for getting humidity readings. But for most hobby projects, the, they get the job done just fine. Also, a big advantage for this is the availability of libraries and code to read them. You will get this running on your favorite platform in no time. And our last item for this in the mail video is this four line level converter module. This is something everyone should have in their toolkit because we are really living in times where things change so fast in the electronics world that you often need to interface chips with different working voltages. These days it's often 5 volts to 3.3 volts adaptation but I'm sure that is bound to change soon. So a chip module like this one uh, gives you 4 lines. On one side they could be switching at 5 volts and on the other side they could be switching at 3.3 volts or some other um, voltage that you need. And all this is done with uh, only discrete transistors and resistors. There are also dedicated chips that can do this job, but it's cheaper with uh, transistors and it's all, it all depends, like if you're designing your own circuit, it depends on um, maybe what kind of space you have available and uh, uh, maybe using discrete components might raise your assembly cost of the PCB, so it might be cheaper for you to get a slightly more expensive single chip solution. But in this case, with these eBay modules, the cheapest ones are uh, always done with discrete components. Thank you for watching this in the mail video. I hope you enjoyed the uh, products I showed in this video. Uh, let me just remind you that uh, by using the links posted in the description, and purchasing items from those links, I get a small uh, commission from every sale. So that helps the channel and help keeps these uh, videos coming. And uh, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe this video because that always helps. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching this in the mail video. I hope you enjoyed the uh, products I showed in this video. Uh, let me just remind you that uh, by using the links posted in the description and purchasing items from those links, I get a 